most adults uh, with a typical level of intelligence, we can find that they can hold between seven and nine units in their mind. And so unit can be defined as digits or words or faces. So this is the idea if we were to introduce you to nine new people and you were asked to memorize their faces, would you be able to do it? And especially if you start pairing those faces with names and personal anecdotes and jobs, well, that's going to increase your levels of processing. It's going to allow for deeper processing. You're more likely to store it. But if it's something very brief and you don't know much about these faces, usually nine faces is the most people can remember. But some people can only remember about seven. This is why when we design things, we tend to have uh, old school phone numbers used to be seven digits long. And now 10 digit phone numbers can be more onerous unless everybody has the same area code. And so a lot of things that we design in society try to be in that seven to nine digit range because more than that may be difficult. And that's why, for instance, if it was hard for you to remember uh, the number I provided, it's okay. That's beyond our nine digits. But maybe you remembered it because you noticed a bit of a trick in there. Maybe you noticed something with the last four digits, the digits of my year of birth, 1983. Maybe you were able to not have to remember all four of those digits as four individual units. Maybe you remembered them as 73, 28, 47, 1983. That's no longer remembering the individual digits. Now you're remembering four units. And by reducing this from 10 units down to four, you're actually doing a technique referred to as chunking. So chunking is a technique that we use in memory psychology where we break down randomly seeming stimuli into groups based on their order and proximity. You're not doing it based on meaning at this point, but it's based on what order they appear to be in. And this is something that we do all the time. We think about a credit card number, there tends to be little spaces between uh, those 16 digit numbers that allows us and rather than remember 16 numbers, we remember four groups of four. Four groups of four is easier for us to remember than 16 groups of one. You might also do this with your social insurance number or your Canadian postal code or your PO box number or different cell phone, cell phone numbers if you're calling people on different numbers. You might also think about this in terms of bus numbers you have to remember or locations. And I think about those little square chocolate bars that you can break down. It's the idea you're snapping the chocolate bar into little chunks and you're chunking them together. So I gave you a 10 digit number before. If I were to give you the top line here, the 732 line, uh, that has a lot of digits. It would be well beyond our cognitive load to try and remember this number of digits that we see in the top of the three lines of numbers on the screen. I would not encourage you to try and memorize that. It would be ridiculous. But if we look at the second row of numbers, perhaps even though it has the same number of digits, perhaps it's going to be easier for us to remember. Why? Well, some of you may look at this and you may say, oh, 1867, year of Canadian Confederation, 1994, 2001, 1778, 1901, 1969, 1987, 2012. And you might see that not as individual digits, but now you're seeing this as groups of four and you can break it down to years. And in addition to chunking, you might also be doing semantic processing with that. You might actually be tying a little bit of a story to each of those years. You might think about something that happened in history. Uh, so if you know something that happened in the year 2001 or something that happened in the year 1969, you might be putting those with certain historical moments in time and saying, ah, I, I can tie these together. That's going to help you. It's connecting, it's making more connections and it's also reducing your cognitive load. Even though you're adding complexity, the complexity is helping you to remember this. Now let's look at the third line. If you look here very quickly at what the numbers are, this may be the easiest line to remember. You can't chunk it into years, but rather than chunking into years, we're no longer chunking here. We're just seeing this as a sequence. You might actually remember, I, the way I would remember this third line is simply one colon 21, a sequence from one to 21. That is remarkably less onerous on my brain to then to remember that top line of numbers. Now, when we're chunking, we do this by ordering and proximity. And when we think about the order of certain stimuli, it's important to understand that how things are ordered can also play a large role in how well we remember them. If things are truly random and there's no sequence or semantic layers to it, but if they're truly random stimuli, we have the tendency to remember the first couple stimuli and the last couple stimuli, but not remember the ones that come in the middle so well. And this is due to both the primary and the recency of bias. So 
So if I were to give you just a list of numbers or a bunch of faces or a bunch of nonsensical words and ask you to remember them, and let's say there's definitely more than seven to nine, so it's definitely more than what we could hold in our working memory at once, so some of them are going to be forgotten, we find that people have an easier time remembering the ones that appeared first, and that's because the primary bias happens. And the primary bias is the idea that when you receive the first couple stimuli, your cognitive load is relatively light. You're not trying to hold too much in your brain yet, and so you're going to have an easier time. You also have a longer time to rehearse them. When you receive the last couple, well, they're the most recently received. So because of that, you only have to rehearse them for a shorter period of time and nothing happens after them that would interfere with your memory of them. So both the first couple and the last couple are going to be the easiest to remember versus the ones that happen in the middle are usually the most forgettable. It's like if we had a big marathon and we're watching on TV, the camera people tend to play a big role in looking at the front runners, and also they might show the people that are the stragglers. But those middle of the pack people are often more forgettable. So as we're stacking things up, we tend to pay attention to what comes early, what comes late, but the middle ground becomes much more hazy. Something to keep in mind if you're trying to study and there's a lot of content, we tend to constantly replay over the first couple of things and the last couple of things and forget about the things in the middle.